Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect Explained in After Effects, we're going to be taking a look at the Audio Effects folder. So I have a sample clip on my timeline to begin working with, and if you ever want to take a look at the waveform of your clip, you can drop down the layer, drop down the Audio folder and the Waveform section, and you can see the audio waveform that you're working with. So the first effect that we have is backwards. This is just kind of a reversal effect. So I can click and drag it on the clip and you'll see it appear in my effects control panel. And there's not really anything to adjust here. It just makes your audio go backwards. So you can hear the backwards type of singing and guitar playing sounds like familiar reversed music. The next effect we have is bass and treble. If I drag this on the effects control panel, one thing to note is that you can stack all of these effects and they go in the order that you put them. So they're applied in that order. That's one tip to remember for this whole series. But the backwards effect, I'm going to delete it for now. The bass and treble effect allows us to increase or decrease the bass and treble. So if I made the bass louder and the treble quieter, you should see what that sounds like. A lot more of the lower end thuds. And if I reverse that, you'll see it'll just sound a lot lighter, less of the low end, just a lot of the higher and mid crispy ends. So you might want to do this even for like a creative reason. Maybe you want it to sound like distant footsteps in the background or chatter in the background of a large hallway. Or maybe you want to do it for functional reasons. If the bass or the low end was a little low, you could increase it or boost it in post. Another effect we have next is delay. This is more of a creative effect. It allows us to add a delay onto the audio, kind of repeating or echoing onto itself. So this is default. If I made it a lot stronger and maybe increase the delay milliseconds more, you'll see this kind of weird reverberation start to happen. Next up we have flange and chorus. These are kind of similar to the delay, more effects that you can add onto audio. So flange and chorus is kind of, it stacks the audio closer together. So you can see in this case, it sounds like more metallic-y, more airy. And there's also a modulation to it. So you hear it going like in and out of, of strength a little bit and you can adjust that rate if you want, and you can increase or decrease the amount of voices. Next up, we have high and low pass filters. This will cut off all sounds from a certain frequency that you choose. So for example, high pass, it'll only pass the high sounds through. So you lose all those low sounds, and you just get whatever's past a certain frequency. Or the low pass, you see the waveform got really dramatically lower because it cuts out all of those high frequencies. And you only have the low end going through. And you can adjust that frequency by hand. So not only might you want to do this for creative effect, like I said, if you're doing an underwater sound effect, you might also want to do it for functional reasons. If there's some sort of low buzzing going on and you want to cut it out, you can try to do it like a low or high pass on it. Next up, we have modulator. This is one that you might have seen in the previous effects as a parameter, but the modulator takes the whole audio. You'll notice when I put it on how much more spiky the waveform became before and after I put it on. Modulator, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. You can see it gets all vibratey and bouncy. It basically vibrates the audio up and down quickly like on a, on a sine wave. Uh, or you can do a triangle wave for a different modulation. And you can make it modulate faster or slower or stronger or weaker. So, you know, if you really crank it up, things will sound weird and alien sounding. You could do this to make someone's voice sound different. Let's say hide the identity of someone's voice in a weird way. Or, you know, for creative alien sounding effects. Or There's obviously multitudes of ways creatively that you can use these and remember that you can stack them all together so you can use a modulator in combination with something else in combination with something else creating somewhat infinite 
combinations. Next up, we have parametric EQ or equalizer. And this just allows us to adjust the low, mid, and high ends in this type of way with the frequency adjustments and bandwidth adjustments on them. So you can boost it or cut it. So if I cut that low end out, you'll see it sounds a little different. It just allows you to boost or cut certain areas of frequency. Next up, we have reverb, another term you might be familiar with. Um, a lot of guitar players use it. It kind of adds like an echo or reverberation onto your voice or instrument. And if you hear what it sounds like, if I really increase the reverb a lot, you could hear it turns it from him singing on the street to him singing in like a huge hallway or huge roof chapel or church. So another way for you to adjust your audio and again not only for functional reasons but let's say you wanted to make someone sound let's say you had footsteps and you wanted to make them sound like they were stepping in like a big hallway and reverberating so reverb another cool effect to play with the next one is stereo mixer this just allows us to adjust the left and right levels of audio so if i can just i can make it all the way only right channel or only left channel or I can just boost you know let's say there was an issue where the sound was louder on the right channel I can try to balance that out in this way and mix it properly and in a creative effect you could also pan it from left to right let's say for a special effect where the noise is like bouncing from your left to right ear remember you can always use keyframes to do stuff like that and also combine that with expressions and lastly, we have tone. This is kind of one of the only generative effects. This just generates a tone, kind of like a phone dial tone at a certain frequency, and you can adjust all these different frequencies to get a unique tone. It's almost like you can make music with it. <laughs> and you can adjust the type of wave that the tone comes in. So, you know, there's, I'm not sure if you'd want to sit here and make organ type of noises with it, but you could use it to create, like, let's say a phone dialing or different special sound effects. Um, you could keyframe different boops and beeps, who knows, an alien laser, and you could warp and modulate that tone if you want, even like, for an example, to combine these effects. Just one idea of how you could start combining these effects, and you could visually see what the modulation is doing in the waveform. So, you know, maybe not on this guy playing guitar, but it gives you just a blank tone for you to warp and bend for all different types of creative purposes if you want. So that's a very brief look at some audio editing in Adobe After Effects. Uh, Adobe also has Adobe Audition for really in-depth audio editing. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos. I'm going over all of the effects folder by folder. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be taking a look at the blur and sharpen effects. Thank you for watching.